I'm not asking you to become preachers. All we're asking you to do, your role, is first and foremost, is to pray. And secondly, just to invite them and bring them here on our celebration Sunday. All you, that's all you have to do. Pray and invite them here to church. For the next two weeks, text them, call them, like their posts, go to a movie with them, buy them coffee or tea, have lunch with them, just spend, spend time with them. If they like bowling, go bowling with them, even if you don't know how. Right? Some, some of our friends would like fishing, and I go fishing, and I, I can't catch fish for the life of me. I, only, I, am, I am only a fisher of men, but not a fisher of fish. But that's because, you know, I just want to spend time with them. You being there is important. Give it that personal touch. Amen? Secondly, the wedding invitation is not exclusive. It, in fact, it is inclusive. Say inclusive. In Luke chapter 14, starting with verse 21, it says, The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, Go quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported that there is still room for more. That's how big the banquet table is. There's always room for one more person. In verse 23, says, So his master said, Go out into the country into the country lanes and highways and the byways, behind the hedges, and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. So Jesus came not just for the Jews. He also came for the Gentiles. I'm not saying gentlemen. He came for the Gentiles. A Gentile is anyone who is not a Jew. Lahat po All of us. If you're not a Jew by heritage, by blood, you are a Gentile. We are Gentiles. Jesus came for each and every one of us. Young and old, rich and poor, healthy and sick, the joyful and the depressed. Jesus came for each and every one of us. In fact, there's so much room in the grand banquet that there's always room for one more in the kingdom of God until He comes. Amen? When we come to a banquet, what do we get out of it? <laughs> Food, <the> God. <laughs> of course, the first thing you think about, banquet, kainan yan, chibugan. Right? Mga Pilipino, mahirig dyan, chibugan na. Yan. Diba? We come to celebrate, we come to be filled, and we come to a place of joy. When we come together to celebrate, a great example of that, if you think about it, is our Sunday celebration, right? We call this, most people call it Sunday service, church on Sunday. We call it Sunday celebration. It's not just a service. It's not just worship. It's a celebration because if you think about it, in the past seven days, think about one thing that God has done for you. Just one. And we come here today to celebrate His goodness and His grace. I did not talk to the Bernardo family. I did not know that they were sharing their testimony today, but the Holy Spirit orchestrated all of this. You see God's goodness, that there is great testimony, that out of your testing comes your testimony. Amen? Hallelujah. You see, this Sunday celebration is basically a banquet where all who have been invited is invited to become part of God's family and to partake at God's table. That is why coming to church on Sunday is important because just like the parable of the great banquet, Jesus is inviting us to come to His banquet table and celebrate. If you think about it, this is like a dry run for heaven. Amen? So hopefully you love the person next to you. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be a lousy time in heaven. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Amen? Tapikin nyo nasa harap nyo, nasa likod nyo, batiin nyo. Hallelujah. Nagkasisihan pa rito. 
Praise God. Praise God. You see all these beautiful people? These are all your brothers and sisters, and you will see them in the great banquet in heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You see, this past week, we celebrated our love for each other on Valentine's Day. Some of you here today are celebrating their birthday, right? This past week, the youth are celebrating their long weekend, and some of you are celebrating a week off from school, right? And Yeah. Some of you have the week off, some of you up until tomorrow. There are so many things that we can be thankful for, and I'm sure that you can think of at least one. But other than celebration, other than coming here and being thankful to what God has done, we also come to be filled. In John chapter 6, verse 35, it says, I am, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, say never, will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me, say never, will never be thirsty. Wow, that's an amazing promise. You see, we eat bread to satisfy our physical hunger. We can satisfy spiritual hunger when we partake in the spiritual life that we have in Christ Jesus. That's why he was called the bread of life. But you see, to have life in us, in the physical, the bread has to be eaten. Kailangan kainin natin yung tinapay para magkaroon tayo ng buhay sa, sa katawan natin. We need to eat the bread so that we can have life. And same with water. We have to drink it so that we can have life. Right? Like I shared before, you can, have, you can eat, uh, if you don't have water for three days, you can actually die. It's interesting because Jesus himself said that he is the bread of life and that he is also the one who will satisfy our thirst. Jesus is the only one who can bring us true life a life that can last for eternity. No one else and nothing else can claim that. But also Jesus gives us the life-giving water for our soul. You see, when we are thirsty, our throat dries up, and we can't swallow, and you know, we get dehydrated. Spiritually, it's the same. If we don't drink from the Word of God, if we don't drink from the power of the Holy Spirit, if we don't drink and partake in Christ, our spiritual body will wither and die. That's why it's important to be here on Sundays, to be fed the Word of God. That's why it's important to be there in your life groups whenever that might be within the week so that you can be encouraged once more. Because I tell you, as soon as you leave this building, even sometimes as soon as you leave this door, the enemy is right there trying to take away your joy, trying to take away your peace, trying to take away what you have already learned, condemning you, bringing back to mind the sin that you have committed. But you have to remember that Jesus already took it on the cross, that you have been made clean, and that you are righteous in the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, it's interesting because sometimes when we have problems, we turn to the world instead of the Word. I get it. You know, there are many smart people out there, and you can get wisdom and knowledge, 140 characters at a time, one like and one post, one viral video at a time, because that's the way of the world. They may seem knowledgeable. In fact, some of these people can quote the Word of God better than I do in whatever language and in whatever translation you can ask them to. But at the end of the day, you have to watch what they say and watch what they do. Are they walking the talk or or are they all air? They say that the Bible is all foolishness for those who are gullible. It's only for those who are gullible. That there are no answers in the great book of the Word of God. And I tell you the truth, I would put my life on the line and tell you that those who say those things, yes, they may know the word back back and forth, but they do not have a saving knowledge of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. 
That's the only way that the Word of God can come true in your life. When you are in Him and He is in you and you submit to the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25, it says, The foolish plan of God is wiser. Say wiser. wiser. Than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness is stronger than the greatness of human strength. Wow. Ang katalinuhan natin, kahit nakamangmangan sa Panginoon yan, mas magaling pa rin ang Panginoon. Amen? Yung pinakakalakasan natin, kahit kahinaan ng Panginoon, mas malakas pa rin sa atin. And the third, we come to a place of joy. I get it, right? Life can get us down. In fact, it can exhaust us physically, mentally, spiritually, drain us emotionally, and practically kill us spiritually. The responsibilities of this world is exhausting, right? It can get us in a rut. Tingnan lang natin mga kabataan. Just look at your children. <laughs> you ask them to do the, what they're supposed to be doing every single day. You wake up, brush your teeth, wash, your, wash yourself, eat your breakfast, go to school, come back. Sometimes they forget one or the other either accidentally or purposely, right? Why? Because it, it takes time, it's a routine, it's exhausting. That's why a lot of people go, do, go and do things that makes them feel alive, right? You know of people that go rock climbing, skydiving, right? What, do they, what else do they do? They go race a car for fun, go scuba diving, buy stuff, buy stuff, it's buy more stuff, covered in plastic, right? See, all these things can bring happiness, but not true joy. Some may even try drinking or smoking or partying, clubbing, drugs, binge eating, binge watching, dating around, flirting around, just so they can feel like somebody wants them, somebody needs them, or that they are alive, or that they belong to something or someone. But the truth of the matter is, these are all lies of the enemy. You see, happiness is triggered by an outside event, such as those that I have mentioned. I am happy because of something that happened to me. But true joy, say true joy, can only come through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It comes from the inside out. You can never buy true joy. You can never buy what the peace of God can bring you. You see, God put eternity in our hearts. That's why there is this inkling in us, especially if we don't know the Lord, that we need to fill something in our lives. Something is empty. And that emptiness can only be filled by Jesus Himself. Whatever you're going through, whatever it is that you're into, remember it it is all temporary. What matters most is eternity. Amen? Romans 8.28. Before we go to the next one, Romans 8.28 says this. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love Him, those who are called according to His purpose. Amen? Go to the next slide. I'm not sure why my clicker is not working. You have to know that the wedding invitation is first personal and it is inclusive. And the third and last point, the, the wedding invitation concludes. It expires. The parable of the great feast, Jesus is pointing out that the kingdom of God is like a great banquet. Many have been invited, but only a few will truly be a part of God's kingdom. The first invitation was sent out to the Jewish nation. The second invitation was sent out to the Gentile nation, to all of us. And our duty as the ones who have accepted the invitation is to share and extend that same invitation to those who don't know God. You see, we're not meant to enjoy God's goodness and grace in these four walls. We are meant to share it with those who need it the most. 
the words of Jesus to the Pharisees is a stark reminder of how crucial